The Chrome View is a grip-on portable display designed specifically for laptops. Unique mechanical clamping structure, thanks to the telescopic clips. And well, you do have to admit that the idea is quite appealing, to say the least. Take any laptop and easily make it a two-screen setup, and do this through a little monitor that can be easily inserted in a backpack and be brought on a coffee shop or a train as they show in the advertisement. Even better, the same device can still be used as a normal monitor, rocking an inbuilt stand both vertically or horizontally. Finally, it has just one extra customization option, you can even attach it to a laptop on the lid so that you can show another person exactly what you're currently seeing. However, I was skeptical. <laughs> Something like this with this many different customizations doesn't feel like it can be easily pulled off. Nonetheless, I put the monitor to the test to see if it was any good and eventually I walked away with um, mixed feelings. Take the material quality as an example. The whole thing is plastic, which actually makes sense. If I want to attach this to a laptop, I do want it to be lightweight. And the back of the device does feel quite good with some okay design reflective strips applied on top. This is overall a great start given the low price. However, the case of the monitor itself is visibly low quality plastic, probably 3D printed, and overall I found the inches and various mechanisms to feel rather unstable. The worst thing is that when looking closely at the most fragile part of the whole device, the hinge, the plastic had already broken within a few hours of usage and was dangerously bending whilst I rotated the device. This is extremely scary as I don't think I exercised any unnecessary pressure but it might just be a faulty unit. That said, I would advise buyers to treat the hinge with great care. Now, back to the good things. The device comes with lots of nice cables in the box. We do have a USB to USB-C USB to USB-C cable, which also powers the monitor, or a USB-A to USB-C just for power, and HDMI to mini HDMI for the video feed. Realistically, this is going to be enough for all laptops I've ever seen in the wild. However, using a mini HDMI instead of full-size HDMI does restrict slightly the usefulness of the device. As an example, I tried to attach it to my Fuji camera, which is recording this video, to actually see myself whilst recording the video. However, the Fuji camera uses a micro HDMI port, so I had a micro HDMI to HDMI cable and I had a HDMI to mini HDMI cable, but no actual way to connect micro HDMI to mini HDMI. Sad, <laughs> but realistically you don't own a device that still uses micro HDMI, that's just me. The I.O. on the device itself is a mini HDMI port, okay, we've got that, two USB-C ports that can be used for power and or video feed, a jack audio out cable. Actually using the hinge took me a little bit of time to fully understand how it worked. The main idea is that we have two components, the monitor, the screen I guess, and the stand, and the stand can rotate 360 degrees. If you do want to use this monitor as a standalone monitor, we will get to attaching this to a laptop as well, then you have to rotate the stand on the other side of the device. If you want horizontal, there's a little leg that extends on the other side and magnets to actually attach the monitor and stand quite strongly together, together so no issues there. If you instead want a monitor monitor to be vertical, then you use the entire stand component as well, you know, the stand. There's a little component that has to be removed to do that though, no big deal, and the stand is equipped with rubber bands to avoid the device being scratched. I appreciate that. Now this little piece that we took off can actually be inserted both on the top and on the bottom. 
I will admit that I have no idea why you would want to insert it on the bottom, but I, you know, I do appreciate the modularity of the device. Overall, it's an impressive piece of contraptions to fit all of these different use cases into such a small device. I do have criticism on the contraption though. When you actually close down the device to place it in a bag as an example, you still have most of the monitor exposed to the wild. So you do have to be extra careful where you keep the device. As an example, if you put some keys in the same bag, then I would expect the device to get very easily damaged. If you do want to attach this thing to a laptop, then there is a little thingy that you have to rotate which is gonna hold the side of the laptop. This is also equipped with rubber bands, so damage to your laptop is extremely unlikely. So um, finally, does it actually attach to laptops? Well, here I was ready to complain about the size of the laptop holders because I have a Dell XPS with incredibly tiny bezels, so I thought uh, for sure the clamps are going to cover part of the screen. They don't, actually, so if it works on the Dell XPS, believe me, it's gonna work regardless of the laptop you are using. Four points here. The inclination of the side monitor is a bit awkward necessarily, but I guess it works. I attached the USB-C cable and boom, ready to start working with a double monitor setup. I was actually quite impressed at how well everything just worked. Almost, I didn't make a mistake. So <laughs> Originally, I tested this monitor whilst using another little 14 inches screen as that was my main monitor back then. Now, I wanted to disable the old screen, which was broken to keep just the crop view. So I went into system settings and I was greeted by two monitors. One of, one of, one of, which, one of, which, one of which was called do not use. And I thought, okay, I guess I'm gonna disable that one. And that was the crop view. For some reason, this monitor is called do not use. My best guess is that given that this is a review unit, somebody set the name to do not use to make sure it was clear. I mean, either way, the name doesn't matter and I'm pretty sure the actual product will have the, will have the correct name in system settings. I just thought it was pretty funny to point that out. In actual usage of this thing, I do have to point out that the gap between the two screens is pretty big. So you won't get any kind of um, continuity between the two devices. It's also quite shaky if you're not on a perfectly still surface. So I have some doubts about train usage of this little thing. However, I do not have any train trip planned anytime soon. So I don't know. <laughs> on my device, which is really, really tiny, the top clamp was actually not holding the top of, of the device. I just took it off. However, this means that this whole thing cannot be moved around as is. It would, it would just slide away. So if I do had the top clamp and force it to hold the top of the device, then, well, it makes no sense while staying still, but I'm actually able to just pick up the laptop and move around both screens at the same time. It's not lightweight, but hey, it's a dual screen setup. So what did you expect? I also tried the crop view on the Starlab little, little laptop, which is slightly smaller and overall more plasticky. I mean, it still works, though yet again, the Starlight only has a micro HDMI port, so I can't actually use that to connect to the monitor. By the way, micro HDMI is a terrible standard that we should just forget about. And, and please use HDMI and not micro, uh, mini HDMI. So I tried to push the crop view to its very, very limits. This is the ThinkPad in its laptop mode. And no, <laughs> that didn't work. If you have a super, super small laptop, you do have to make sure you check sizes or this whole thing won't really work. However, to be fair, you can still just place it, uh, the monitor, I mean, on the side of the device. I mean, it's gonna take more space, but it's still a screen, come on. So finally, uh, the controls. These are the most standard you can get. I believe they're actually some sort of built-in vendor thing. 
You've got four buttons on the back of the device and you can control brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, adjust image position, these kind of things, but absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. As far as maximum brightness, brightness goes, I'm afraid I do not have the tools to measure this. M measure nits, not measure, measure nits. Sorry. Finally, do let me say my personal opinion on this device. So it's really, really hard to give it a negative review when I think the price is overall quite sane and it does pretty much everything it would say it does. There's only one major flaw that I encountered and it's obviously the plus being broken near the hinge. That's why I started with that right away. However, at the same time, do let me say that I'm not in love with the crop view either. It's not something I will personally use regularly, but I do realize that my use case are different compared to other people and finding this little thing useful or not will of course be subjective, but objectively it works. Just maybe use it carefully. <laughs> That is everything from me and um, thank you.